So let me begin by uh, thanking the organizers for hosting this wonderful uh, meeting for all these years, in fact. And uh, so this work has been done in collaboration with uh, Shogato Guho, who is currently a PhD student at IIT Bombay. And in fact, this work started off as a part of his MSc project, which has now morphed into part of his PhD work. And then you have Mithun Mitra at IIT Bombay and Ignacio, who is at uh, SICAM Switzerland. And so in this talk, I'm going to discuss how, uh, what role catch bond plays uh, so catch bond uh, phenomenon, how, uh, so people see catch bond in uh, molecular motors. So how it manifests in terms of the stability characteristics of motor microtubule complex. Uh, so how does it manifest in the stability characteristics of such complexes? And in particular, this is relevant in context of uh, spindle formation during cell division, where these motors play a crucial role. So let us just briefly begin. Uh, with this process of spindle formation during uh, cell division. So this is one of the important events during cell division wherein you have this antiparallel. So what you see here is a fluorescent la labeled image of these microtubules. And what you see in blue is the chromosome. So during cell division in metaphase, you have this antiparallel microtubules which sort of interlock and form this spindle-like uh, structure. And uh, then this spindle-like structure is stable typically during metaphase for about 30 minutes. And how, in order to understand the stability of the structure, it arises out of the interplay of the different forces uh, uh, that are at play. So I'm sort of just going to list some of the uh, interactions that take place. So you have this interactions of these uh, microtubules with the chromosome arms. Apart from that, there are also these organelles called kinetochores, which also interact with these microtubules. And if you go to the cell periphery, so these uh, microtubules also interact with the cell periphery or the cell boundary uh, via this cortical motor proteins, which binds to this uh, microtubules and exert forces. Uh, but I'm going to sort of focus on the region of overlapping microtubules. So if I have a cartoon of uh, whatever you see here, so these overlapping microtubules are cross-linked by these motor proteins. So there are generically like kinesin and dynein uh, motor proteins. And apart from that, in this overlap region, you also have this passive proteins like ASI uh, E1, which typically uh, exert entropic forces. And the stability is determined by all these forces at play. And one can, of course, in the various experiments, uh, what is uh, what has been established is that, you know, presence of these motors or this uh, passive cross-linkers are crucial for the stabilization of these structures. What has also been observed are these typical characteristic oscillations in this uh, mitotic spindle structures, which have been measured and quantified and people have tried to uh, understand it theoretically. So let us, uh, so before I go here, what I want to point out is that you know, this motor protein. So I'm going to just focus on what are the processes that are going on in the overlap region where these motor proteins are cross-linking these microtubules. These motor proteins are stochastically binding and unbinding to the filaments. And these are the proteins which would actually exert sliding forces on this microtubule. So we want to first understand the binding characteristics of these motor proteins to the filament. And in particular, uh, I want to focus on the unbinding characteristics of these motors to the microtubule filaments. And what happens when you exert, so if there is a force which is acting on these motor proteins, how does the unbinding rate uh, change as a function of the force? So typically one can uh, think of this binding uh, state as bound state as being at the minima of some potential. And what we know is that the unbinding rates are, uh, would scale as uh, basically the exponential of the barrier height of this potential. Now when you exert a force on this uh, motors, so their unbinding rate, one thing which can happen is that the result of this exertion of the force is like effectively leading to the increase in the height of the uh, barrier and that would manifest as increase in the rate of the unbinding rates of this uh, of this uh, motors. So in fact, what has been observed is that if you look at this kinesin motors, that is what they display, and this is what I'll call the slip bond characteristic, that it exponentially, the unbinding rate sort of goes up as a function of force. However, you can have another scenario that where you, know, you exert a force and the barrier height actually goes down, 
And uh, due to that, essentially the unbinding rate also goes down as a function of force for certain range of uh, force parameters. And when one looks at the unbinding characteristics of dynein motor, this catch bond effect is seen to manifest itself. So what I show here are the experimental data points for the unbinding characteristics of a single dynein from a microtubule filaments. And what you note here is that if you look, so this is of the order of pico-newton and these are in vitro experiments uh, which was done by Kunwar and Gross, etc. And if you look at the dissociation rate, for initial range of force, there is a slip-like behavior where the unbinding rates increase as a function of force. And then later on, uh, you see this decrease. So this is really the catch bonded regime uh, where the unbinding rate decreases as a function of force. One can sort of qualitatively understand this behavior in dynein motors by looking at the structure of uh, uh, the, uh, this motor. What, uh, what you have in dynein motor are, so these are the two binding domains. So this these two domains bind to the microtubule filaments. And then there's this other uh, domain which might be carrying, you know, cellular cargo if, it, if, if the dynein is carrying some, uh, you know, cellular cargo like or, or some other organal. ATP hydrolysis basically happens in this AAA domain. So when you apply tension or you apply a force on, uh, on uh, this dynein, what happens is there are actually contractions of this AA domain where ATP is hydrolyzed. And this contraction actually leads to change in the tension of this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, tension at the microtubule binding domains. And this sort of leads to a sort of lock and key like mechanism which leads to uh, catch bonding kind of phenomenon that we observe. We had tried to quantify this sort of qualitative picture in a phenomenological model in terms of what we'll call the threshold force bond deformation model, where we took uh, this data uh, from these experiments of Gross and tried to fit. So the basic idea is that here what we say is that you, there is a threshold force after which the catch bond is activated and catch bond uh, activation is followed by this regime of you know decay of the binding rate where you sort of associate a bond deformation energy associated with the catch bond and the parameters which would characterize the catch bond strength are this alpha and f naught and this is sort of the rough con comparison of uh, that fitted uh, data with that. Now the next question is that now that we have modeled catch bond, the uh, question of interest is first of all, how does this catch bond in individual motors, how does it manifest in different properties? First of all, how does it manifest in context of uh, transport properties of you know, cellular cargo that are being transported inside the cell? I'm not going to discuss that, but I'm just going to sort of flash the result because I'll focus on what are the implications in terms of the mechanical stability of or the cytoskeletal structure within the cell. Uh, so, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so this is, I'm sort of listing what is the effect of catch bond intracellular transport process. So imagine you have some cellular cargo which is being transported by this catch bonded kind of dynein motors and you are applying some force on this opposing load force on the cargo. So one of the, uh, you know, sort of paradoxical or I would say counterintuitive behavior that you observe is that they show this non-monotonic velocity force uh, dependence. So if you look at the velocity of the cargo, imagine you increase the load force, there is a regime of force for which you would normally expect that the velocity, uh, because you're uh, providing an opposing load force, that it would actually slow the cargo down, but it, uh, it will actually, it, in, in fact, the velocity of the cargo can increase. So that is what, what is one manifestation. We also had looked at, uh, you know, what is the implication for, you know, bidirectional transport. And there was this one paradox which was there, there has been there for a long time that, you know, for certain set of experiments, imagine you have a cargo which is being transported by these two different kinds of motors, kinesin and dynein. And the net transport is sort of determined by the tug of war of this, whichever are the stronger set of motors, uh, they are able to carry it in a particular direction. What we see is that, so that means if you are sort of inhibiting one kind of motor, you sort of expect the cargo to move more favorably in the other sense. What, what is seen is that, you know, you have this kind of anomalous transport characteristic here. For instance, if you increase the unbinding rate, you actually see the average processivity in the plus direction uh, goes up. So this is, uh, so in some sense, this catch bond provides a resolution of this particular paradox. Uh, but let me go back 
to the question we are trying to understand that how does it manifest in terms of stability of motor microtubule complexes and uh, more generally how, how is it going to affect the stability of mitotic spindle and what kind of phenomenon it is going to give rise to. So, we uh, consider a sort of a minimal model. So, consider a, a set of just two antiparallel microtubules and uh, so this is the model. So, you have this passive proteins which are you know so they will exert entropic forces and so they are confined within this overlap region. Then you have this motor proteins. So, this dynein motor proteins which are catch bonded. So, they can uh, walk on this they walk on this filaments they can also cross link. So, there is stochastic attachment and detachment process of this cross link motors and then there is a bath. So, they can attach and detach. So, basically the processes that we are considering is that so once this motors are cross link they will basically try to uh, slight and reduce the overlap length whereas the passive proteins due to the entropic reasons they are going to uh, try uh, tend to increase the overlap length and uh, then you have this stochastic detachment and attachment of this uh, motors. And so, one can sort of write down a minimal model where the variables of the model are this overlap length, NC are the number of this cross link motors in the overlap length and NB are the uh, uh, you know motors which are just attached uh, to one of the filaments that is when they do not exert the forces. And one can so here what I have listed is you know the, uh, the how the L changes is governed by so there is a term which will try to decrease the overlap length this is due to the motors and the passive cross linkers uh, are tending to increase it, increase it and finally some of the assumptions that we have taken is that you know load is equally shared by uh, shared by this cross link motors then we assume linear force velocity relation and a zero backward velocity in super stall condition. These, these are the usual stochastic equations basically these are whatever uh, you know the gain terms uh, corresponding because a bound uh, motor can change into a cross link motor and vice versa. So, uh, these set of equations are what governs the dynamics of uh, this system. What we do is we are interested in looking at the steady state solution for this and the stability. So, we do essentially a linear stability uh, analysis for this uh, process and uh, what I show here is the stability diagram. So, let me just quickly uh, point out that here we have the stability diagram is in terms of delta n is sort of a measure of the propensity of motors to bind to the filament and F s is the stall force. So, the force at which the motor stops walking. And what you see here is that interestingly, uh, so if I focus on this particular diagram, so there are regions of uh, linearly stable solutions, there are unstable solutions, there are regions where you have a bistable uh, like behavior and interestingly there is a region where uh, the, uh, it is not linearly stable, but there are uh, it is stabilized uh, what is by uh, this limit cycle oscillations. Since I am lacking in time, I will just quickly show you that you know, so in this limit cycle regime. Uh, what you find is that uh, you know so there are there are the spontaneous oscillations which are stabilized and the typical time periods for uh, you know typical range of bio biological parameters is like 4 to 10 seconds and uh, you know the length overlap length is around you know 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.2 microns. Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean finally we also looked at you know are these uh, oscillations robust. So, if you put in a white noise this uh, as you can see that uh, you know the, the oscillations are still sustained. So, in, to that extent they are still robust uh, to uh, the noisy environment within the cell. And so, I would quickly try to summarize that what we have presented here is to show that you know the catch bond can manifest as this novel mechanism of uh, generating oscillations. And uh, this gives rise to a sort of rich phase diagram, but crucially one would like to actually explore that what is the relevance in context of uh, spindle oscillations because other mechanisms of the spindle have already been proposed. What we are saying is that generically for typical biological parameters the fact that this dynein motors which are constituting uh, uh, which are part of this uh, spindle should also generate an oscillations. Do we see the signatures of that and what biological role does it play in context of oscillations in this spindle. So, with that with that I would like to uh, stop here and would be happy to take your questions. Thank you. And yeah, so for more details since I have rushed through you can visit the poster of Shogato who is there.